7,000 people died last year, lots of them older and disabled people, because they couldn't afford energy for their homes. Previously, local governments had funds um, which they could give to families who are individuals who are in full poverty, and these have been cut in the last year by thirds. I'm here to represent my next door neighbours who are all elderly, right, pensioners who have worked all their lives for a pension, and now that a pension's being cut, £500 a month, that includes your gas, your electric, your rent, everything, your food. I'm having to feed my next door neighbour when she's running out of money. We have the worst fuel poverty figures of anywhere in Western Europe in the UK, and that is deeply shameful, and the government should be ashamed that that is the case. People with mental health problems are really under the impact of the government cuts. Support services for people are being taken away. A lot of people are being coppered with a bedroom tax. A lot of people who previously never had to pay council tax are now having expected to manage to pay council tax payments and also to pay fuel debts. The Department of Energy and Climate Change and the big six energy companies like E.ON and British Gas and EDF are all in on it together. Energy companies are allowed to make as much profit as they want whilst we're all left to freeze in our homes. In the last 18 months, which is when bills are highest than they've ever been, the big six energy companies' profits as a whole have gone up, have doubled. British Gas currently make a profit of £20 every single second. The corporations are in writing government policy and alongside that we have government attacks on disabled people, which means that as support and services are whittled away, disabled people are becoming more and more isolated at home. And when you're isolated at home, being able to cook and clean yourself and keep warm are absolutely vital to keep them body and soul together. Now what we don't see is the voluntary sector organisations and the user-led groups having that same opportunity to write government policy. And we need to question ourselves and we need to question those in power about why that isn't happening. Time to wake up! Wakey, wakey, dead! Wake up! Your government doesn't care! Your government doesn't care! One example that David Cameron has been talking about is fracking is the answer and as we've seen in Balcombe in the last few weeks that's met a lot of local opposition, a lot of national opposition and what's more the boss of Quadrilla, who are the company doing, who want to do the fracking have said they don't think it will bring down the bills anyway. BPAC were a really key part of organising for the Reclaim the Power Action Camp and we did shut down Quadrilla for six days. We stopped them drilling for six days. On the big day of action that we had, it was actually Deepak that initiated that action. We did it to stop this government's dash for gas, because we know that it's going to accelerate catastrophic climate change. We know it's going to bring fuel poverty to an even bigger crisis than it is at the moment, and it's going to really entrench power in the hands of the big six energy companies and fossil fuel companies. We're not going to stand for fracking, for fossil fuels, and for fuel poverty. We're not going to have it. We're going to reclaim the power. Yeah! There is a different way we can have community controlled uh, renewable energy. They're doing it in Berlin right now. This isn't a pie in the sky idea. It happens in other cities and other places. People have solar panels on their houses and they create their own energy and they feed into the national system. When they create more energy than they use and have a surplus, it feeds into the system and they get a rebate. And that's what they're afraid of, these powerful um, energy companies. They're afraid that actually ordinary citizens will be able to deliver their own energy needs. And they're afraid that we won't actually have the kind of um, dependency that we have at the moment on them. We'll get rid of these bastards one way or another. 
you know, I think now Bevan had it right. Tories are vermin, and you know what you do with vermin, don't you? I'm always there to win. We were where the bastards at, one way or the other. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're becoming united. Different groups are getting involved. Join up locally. With those workers and unions who are involved, in energy campaigns, join up on the ground with activists and anti-cuts campaigns and join up on the ground with the anti-fracking and the environmentalist groups and come together and learn from each other and share your skills, connect the dots and become more effective where you are and what you're doing because that's how we're going to get ourselves the kind of power that we deserve and we're fighting for. Thank you very much. We're here to um, argue about saving the NHS, we don't want that privatised, and also saving ILF, the Independent Living Fund, which is being closed. We've taken the um, government to court over their consultation, which was massively, massively flawed, and we lost the case against the DWP. We're going to appeal this case in October. This whole thing that's happening with this government, demonisation of disabled people, the cutting back of support, is against the UN Convention on the rights of disabled people. And we're in touch with the UN about this also. But we will take this bloody government through every court and through every international human rights body. Together with the power of Atos, we can cure disability. The 11 million disabled people in this country no longer need to be disabled. With multiple choice forms, we can get them back to work. Minimum wage work can be your blessing. And together with our spiritual leader, IDS, and the Lord, not the good Lord, but Lord Freud, we can cure you. We can cure you, my flock. You can be back to rock. Atos Hills! Atos Hills, my flock! This is blasphemy! The name Atos is now a poison brand. They're having trouble recruiting staff, they're having risks taking their contracts off them by the government, and they've been taken to court because of the work done by TPAC and our brothers and sisters in organisations like the Mental Health Resistance Network. We've been campaigning for the last 18 months outside the Atos offices in Nor Norwich because, believe it or not, the company that has a multi-million pound contract to assess disabled people hasn't got an accessible building. When disabled people go into the Atos building in Norwich, they're told to get out because we're fire hazards. The only thing that's standing between disabled people and destitution or homelessness is the goodwill of their GPs at the moment. We've always shown solidarity with the medical profession in the past and we're letting them know that it's a two-way street. This week we've announced that we'll be taking legal action against the local medical committees who are mounting a disgraceful campaign called Just Say No. And it's just saying no to patients who need further medical evidence in support of their appeals. They're saying that it's not in their contract with the government and therefore they're not going to do it because it's free work. Well, you know, that we've got news for them. We'll see them in court. Councillors are getting the DWP to make deductions from people's benefits to pay council tax after people have been taken to court. In Camden, a Labour council, they decided that they would not exempt disabled people and carers from the council tax contribution. In 1850, 53% of the long-term inhabitants of the workhouse were disabled people. The attitudes that were developed in the workhouse of treating us like scum, of having no rights, 
have continued to be the ethos of people who run care homes and establishments and institutions. We need to be striving for an actual care service that delivers care free at the point of need. Care packages must be portable to allow disabled people to move around without endless reviews. When disabled people come together, we win. Throughout our history, we have had many successes. We know that Ed Miliband has already said that if a Labour government's elected, they'll take over the spending plans of the condemns. That means this isn't a fight that could be won inside the law. This is a fight that has to be taken outside the law because neither of these governments, whether they be condemns or Labour, are going to look after the interests of disabled people. We know that after the Second World War, this country had a national deficit the same size, if not larger, than the one we currently have today. And we built our way out of it by building a welfare state. Companies have accumulated huge cash mountains, which they sit on and do nothing with. This money comes from the labour of ordinary people who work day in and day out in this country over the years to build the roads, to build the hospitals, to build the schools, to build the public transport, to provide for everyone, which is now being stolen out of our hands by the plunder. Yeah the piracy of big business and corporations. So we need to get the money out of the tax havens, we need to tax these cash mountains from big business and invest it in our vital public services, in our welfare services and a green uh, and renewable energy system. This week has been a celebration of disability pride. It's been an opportunity for us not just to stand up and say what we're against for what's going on at the moment, but what the disabled people's hopes and aspirations are. And we're culminating that with today's protest and the presentation of the Reclaiming Our Futures Disabled People's Manifesto, which we'll be presenting to Parliament today. The Secretary of State for the Department of Work and Pensions, Mr Ian Duncan Smith, is struggling is struggling to pay for lots of things. For example, he's struggling to pay for his house, so his father-in-law gave him a two million pound mansion out in the country just so he'd be comfortable. He's struggling to pay for his underwear, and he needs the state to bail him out, and regularly makes sure that all the receipts he pays for his underwear are handed into this government and are all paid on time and on price. So we would like you to circulate some underwear between you. And we would like you to write some messages on that underwear for Ian Duncan Smith. Oh, my auntie's in a wheelchair, but these Tories don't care. Oh, they say they have a deficit, she has to pay her share. Oh, 60 quid a month will steal, then Leah pay her fate. While skiing, millionaires a tax cut, cos they say they're due a break. But you can't have a spare room in a forky council flat. Oh, Ian Duncan Smith and Cora put an end to that. Oh, they say move to a smaller house, they say that it's a plan when the odds against you finding one are 99 to 1 but we can't have a spare room in a porky console plot oh Ian Duncan Smith and God have put an end to that oh they say move to a smaller house they say that it's a plan when the odds against you finding one